This is a compilation of previous fruit videos, curated and summarized for you. Banana Actually, bananas are not necessarily bad for you. The bananas are uh, right around 30 grams of carbs, depending on how big they are. So if it is a small banana, you can consider like a 20, 22 grams. If it is a large banana, you are taking around 30 grams. The glycemic index of a banana is right around 50, which is not bad. Below 55 glycemic index is very acceptable. If you're a type 1 diabetic and a banana is your breakfast and you know that you take insulin for your carbohydrates or you're taking one unit for 10 grams of carbs and you you're having a large banana that's three units you take it you're fine not a big deal that total of 120 calories is not going to make or break anything right but on the other hand if you're having banana as a dessert on top of already 60 grams of carbohydrates that you had at lunch or dinner of course it's going to increase your carbohydrate load even if it is a low glycemic index food or moderate glycemic index food that does not necessarily mean that it's not going to spike your blood sugar it may spike your blood sugar and then how much it spikes your blood sugar depends on your insulin resistance as well peaches peaches are actually very good if you have diabetes and you want to have a fruit you can go for peach the peaches are actually low in carbs a moderate sized peach will be around 12 grams of carbs the small one is 7.5 the glycemic index which is the criteria how fast your blood sugar spikes when you eat something well with peaches that is around 28 to 56 around there so it's less than 50 overall which puts the glycemic index in the good category right peaches are really good to avoid obesity and diabetes yeah you guess it right it's full of fiber it doesn't spike your blood sugar as fast it is glycemic index is low and as long as you eat in what yeah i hear you moderation then you will be just fine but there are a lot of vitamins in there what vitamins are they a b c vitamins also minerals potassium magnesium phosphorus so these are great vitamins that will help you in many antioxidant functions Peaches are also have been useful for treatment of anemia, bladder infections, kidney stones, digestion problems, and so forth. Pineapple. Now guys, pineapples are delicious. Pineapples glycemic index is around 56 to 65, depending on the ripeness and the origin of the pineapple. There's something else called glycemic load, right? Glycemic load is determined by how much carbohydrate is in per portion. Pineapple's glycemic load is six. So anything less than four is perfect. Anything less than 10 is reasonable. More than 10, don't do it, right? But six is still reasonable. So how do you eat pineapple? I would suggest have a thin slice. Uh, and if you're gonna be active and you're gonna be taking a walk, have a thick slice or have a cup of the pineapple. So basically, if you do that, you are not going to really kill yourself with, with too much sugar. It's around 16 grams of carbs per a cup of pineapple. Watermelon. Watermelon. Watermelon is tasty. Watermelon has a lot of vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, a lot of antioxidants that protects you from cancer, from heart disease, and you name it. The watermelon is 90, 95% water. You have to consume a lot of it to be able to really spike your sugar high. One cup of watermelon is only going to give you 12 grams of carbohydrates. Glycemic index is around 70 or 80 for, for watermelon, which can spike your blood sugar. If you, for example, made a watermelon juice and you just chuck it. Now, you don't really know how much watermelon you had, because it's not in a real form anymore. But if you're, when you're eating watermelon in cubes and cuts, then it makes you feel like you're eating a lot, but actually there's not a lot of carb in there. Oranges. If you wanna choose between orange and an orange juice, go for the orange, why? Because the orange itself has a lot more fiber, it's not processed, versus orange juice is processed. They have been sometimes go through these vigorous processes to go to become a juice at the end. They sometimes are kept in these big tanks for like a year, and it's not necessarily the best thing for you. Freshly squeezed, if you're gonna have it, that's your best bet, but I would not go buy those uh, from the grocery store that, uh, that has been sitting there forever. 
remember. Now, uh, that's number one. Now, when it comes to how much it spikes your blood sugar. Now, it does spike your blood sugar three times more if you drink orange juice versus you eat that orange. Uh, that's because you're eliminating, again, the, the fiber and all that. And then anything that's liquid, it definitely is absorbed way faster to your blood. So when you look at the glycemic load, which is a combination of glycemic index and how much carbs you're eating, is three times more glycemic load that comes with orange juice versus the oranges. So I would definitely suggest if you're going to have orange, go with the orange, not with the orange juice. So glycemic index again for an orange juice is around 60 to 70 versus the glycemic index of an orange is 40, which is actually not bad at all. Anything less than 50, 55 glycemic index food is, is a good carb. Grapes. All right, so can diabetics have grapes? Uh, some people call grapes sugar bumps. Is that correct? Uh, maybe, maybe not. So how can you really eat grapes if you have diabetes? Uh, now, one serving of grapes is typically around 16 grapes, half a cup. And when was the last time you just had a half a cup of grapes? 16 gra grapes, half a cup of grapes has a glycemic load of 11. So even half a cup of grapes can really spike your blood sugar. But if you're going to have, uh, say, one cup of grapes, you know, that is still 16 grams of carbs. But since glycemic load is a little bit on the high side, it will probably spike your blood sugar regardless. Apples. Now let's compare the two apples. Now apples have a glycemic load of, what, six? And that's very good. Uh, and it's rarely ever people eat more than one apple, right? So that's why I think apple is a better choice because, you know, you are basically having one apple, glycemic index is low, a small apple is around 15 grams, and you have your fruit, you're good to go. Uh, but it's a lot easier to go overboard with the grapes. And given that the glycemic load is almost twice as apples, I will definitely prefer apples over grapes. Cherries. Let's talk about uh, really what's the effect of cherries. Now, what is the glycemic load of uh, cherries is around 13. So it's a high glycemic index food and it can spike your blood sugar even if you do not eat too much of it. So glycemic load, remember anything more than 10 is not good. Anything more than 20 is pretty much a suicide for diabetes. Anything, you know, between four and 10 is acceptable, but once you go above 10, you're taking chances there. More than likely will spike your blood sugar. Now. If you are having around one cup of cherries, that's around 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates in total. So it is not horrible if that's the only thing you're having. But again, cherries are nice. They have a lot of anthocyanins, which are great for vascular system, for heart, antioxidants, and you don't need a lot of it, right? So if you're having a half a cup or one cup of cherries, will be more than enough to get your antioxidant needs without having to load yourself with a lot of sugar. Pomegranate. Did you know that people with diabetes who actually drank pomegranate juice for three months had a lower risk of atherosclerosis? which is hardening of your arteries or artery stiffening. Pomegranate juice actually appeared to reduce the harmful LDL cholesterol levels. What are the real benefits of pomegranate? Pomegranates include flavonoid antioxidants, which have potent anti-inflammatory properties, reducing the consequences of high blood sugar, such as muscle soreness, exhaustion, and everything else you may be experiencing. Also, there are substances in pomegranate that reduces the resistant hormone levels. So the higher the resistant hormone levels, the higher the insulin resistance, unfortunately, which causes the problem in the glucose uptake in your body. And that results in glucose accumulation in your blood. And there you go, you have diabetes. Let's get to the nitty gritty part of eating pomegranates, guys. So the pomegranates actually are 14 grams of sugar per 100 grams. So don't let that deter you though, but pomegranates provide still seven grams of fiber and 30% of daily vitamin C requirement in that 100 grams. 
the glycemic index of pomegranate is 53. This puts the pomegranate juice in the low glycemic index category, which means that it is slowly ingested and digested. It also has phenolic chemicals and it helps with the actually weight loss and the fiber in it helps control your hunger and appetite. So what other benefits do we get from pomegranates? Well, there are numerous health benefits that, for example, has been shown to reduce the arthritis pain. It lowers your blood pressure, preventing heart disease, as we discussed, fighting the bacterial and fungal infections, and improving cognition. So we have vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K. They're all immune boosting elements. They're all found in pomegranates. The only problem that you may experience with eating too much pomegranate is severe constipation and some intestinal blockages have been reported as well. Apricots. So let's talk about apricots. Now, why I'm comparing the apricots or five apricots to one apple? Well, because the calories in five apricots and carbohydrates are very similar to one apple. But another cool thing about apricots before we forget is that the dried apricots or the fresh apricots are pretty much the same when it comes to their glycemic index and how much it can spike your blood sugar thanks to their fiber content. Well, the apricots have vitamin K, which is important for preventing the coagulation, the coronary artery disease. It has iron, it has calcium, potassium, vitamin A, and all these vitamins are, believe it or not, more than the vitamins that are present in the apple. So the glycemic index of the apricot is 34, which is really low in our scale. If you're having a portion of apricot, uh, a cup of apricot, let's say, would be a small load. So the glycemic load in that case will be around four, which below 10 is considered good, below five is considered perfect. So that makes the apricots as a perfect snack for someone with sweet tooth and diabetes, someone who wants to reduce their complications due to cardiovascular disease, someone who wants to have bowel movements. It's interesting that actually apricots have a laxative effect. So if you really have constipation issues that may be the perfect solution for you the perfect natural solution for you dates dates are full of sugar right we know that uh, but they're delicious we know that too one date so around 18 grams of sugar carbohydrates right one of the primary things that you get with the dates is flavonoids right so that is one antioxidants that make you live longer there is also carotenoids in this uh, in the dates and what what does it help with macular degeneration now some of you may have it already you don't have to have diabetes to have macular degeneration but that is one of the most common reason for going blind another one is uh, phenolic acid and that is uh, primarily to prevent heart disease and cancer. Glycemic load is a little bit on the high side. Put some nut to it. It's going to give you more omega-3s, more antioxidants. It's going to slow the spike of your blood sugar. It's going to give you a prolonged satiety. Rambutan. Rambutan grows in a huge tree that is up to 75 feet, which is 26 meters in height. It grows in tropical climates such as Philippines, Malaysia, and then Indonesia. 100 grams of rambutan, which is around 11 rambutan, contain about 84 calories and 20 grams of carbs only. Here are some main health benefits of rambutan. First of all, it has as much fiber as you would find in the same quantity of apples, oranges, and pears. So when you have a lot of fruits in your diet, you know you will not have constipation easily and also you will have a lower cholesterol and lower risk of colon cancer. So it's also been shown that the soluble fibers provides food for bacteria, for the beneficial bacteria. As a result, these bacteria produce short chain fatty acids. These same fatty acids are essential nutrition for the cells in your gut. These short chain fatty acids can also reduce inflammation and improve the symptoms of intestinal diseases, including but not limited to Herbal bowel syndrome, which is known as IBS, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. What else? Rambutan is very rich in vitamin C, which is an important antioxidant protecting your body's cells against damage and infections. So eating five rambutan only 
will meet 50% of your daily vitamin C needs, which is around 10 grams only. So it is very good in copper content as well, and it, the copper helps with the proper growth, not the cancerous growth, but the proper growth and maintenance of various of your cells, including your bones, your brain, and your heart. Rambutans are rich in vitamin B5 as well. So what does it do? B5 plays an important role in helping your body convert food into energy. So vitamin B5 is available through food, so it cannot be produced in your body. So it is an essential and important vitamin to consume. So you have to consume around five milligrams of B5. So Rambutan offers small amounts of manganese as well, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, iron, and even zinc. So how does Rambutan help with the weight loss? Well, in addition to it is high insoluble fiber content that keeps you full, the soluble fiber in Rambutan can dissolve in water and it forms a gel-like substance in your gut that helps slow the digestion. So it also helps reduce the appetite. So that's how it works. So how does it help with the infections then? Well, in addition to the bunch of vitamin C that you're getting from Rambutan, which you should know by now, if you already watched my vitamin C video, that it helps the risk of infections. But in addition to those, a lot of studies also show that it contains compounds that may protect your body against viruses and bacterial infections. So what are the other less known benefits of Rambutan? Well, it may reduce the risk of cancer. So animal studies found that the compounds in Rambutan may possibly help prevent the growth of cancer cells. Why you say possibly? Because these are mostly animal studies. So it may protect against heart disease as well. Again, another animal study showed that the Rambutan reduced the total cholesterol and triglyceride levels in diabetic mice. As you may know from my cholesterol videos, how triglycerides can be related to heart disease. Well, last but not least, it can actually protect against diabetes as well. So if you have insulin resistance, Rambutan may improve your insulin sensitivity and reduce fasting blood sugars and overall insulin resistance. That is the end of our video, guys. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Remember to watch the hundreds of other diabetes and insulin resistance and weight-related videos we have. And remember to share. Talk to you later, guys. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.